Hello, my name is Second, and we are playing, there we go, we are playing God Slapper's Paradise. And we're out here uh, on our little mostly island, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to build to live in. But first, we ought to address the elephant in the room, and that is the malware issue with CurseForge that you may have heard about. Uh, now, my understanding is there's a piece of malware called Fracturizer that was... It had managed to get into, uh, you know, a reasonable number of mods. Not, you know, a whole lot, but enough that anyone who plays modded Minecraft should be concerned. Now, there's, uh, there are good instructions, and there's even a detector tool now that you can get from CurseForge to see if uh, you've been infected with this thing. The good news is that uh, I've, I've done all the things and checked all the everything, and uh, God Slapper's Paradise does not appear to be affected by the issue. My own computer certainly isn't, and uh, I'm playing the same version of the game that you are. So, uh, so we should be in good shape, um, but I will have the, uh, the link to the CurseForge page that tells you uh, how to detect if you have the issue and what to do about it in the description of the video. So here we have an extremely overpowered wandering trader. All right, what did you want, 25? Yeah. Not every day you get a beacon, just like on your front lawn. Whoa. I didn't know this thing's texture went below it. That's cool. Oh, good thing I set the telescope back up. We finally got an eclipse, so we'll be able to discover Horologium uh, come nightfall. Now, I think the first thing we're going to do is kind of raise this thing out a little bit just a little bit and up around at least part of the island so that we have some more room up top this looks like horologian not quite dark enough to draw the lines yeah don't panic if you see it and you can't draw it it means it's just not quite dark enough yet and there we go okay we got a little bit more room up here to work with. Don't know if I really stopped in the right place. I might want to extend actually out to here. I thought about it. We'll give us more room. That's what we're going to do. Okay, hopefully this will be enough room. Now, we're going to want a nice round tower. Oh, oh my. I wonder where a zombie came from. Um, there's like a mega torch right there. So we're gonna need some dye and some bone meal to help us make a circle. We're gonna do that by making ourselves first some floral fertilizer. This stuff is kind of like bone meal. Pardon the lag, I just logged into the world here. Um, except it only produces botania flowers. Now we could go out and like find them in the wilderness, but nah. If we can find, uh, well, I don't, I don't think we got a white one. <laughs> it's actually a white one I was hoping for. We can make some more of that stuff. Okay, we got a good amount. And we got two white petals, which is exactly what we need. I need one more petal now that I've... Oh, or we can use a mushroom. Perfect. Next thing we need is... Uh, what is it? It's not that. Um, petal apothecary. That's it. And we'll need either a mushroom or a petal. And a little bit of, little bit of slab, a little bit of cobblestone. And we'll just craft it up. Lovely. Oh, it used, well, we can use the shimmering mushroom, that's fine. The shimmering mushrooms are that they work like one petal in these recipes. Now, what this is, you use this to make flowers. And as you might guess, you use it to make uh, flowers with petals. <laughs> now, we are going to need a seed. All of these take a seed. But we should be able to just uh, cue these in here. And a white shimmering mushroom, and then you see it's got a check mark and a seed. We get a little something called a pure daisy. 
Now we're just going to put this down in our little temporary mess over here. The pure daisy transforms things. And you can look up and see exactly what it does in JI, but what we want right now is some living wood. Let's see what else it can do. Here we go. Yeah. So Batania has great JI integration. So you, know, you can get cobblestone from netherrack, you can get blue ice. So living rock is, we get that from stone. Living wood, we get it from logs. Blaze mesh and obsidian can be useful. Uh, water into snow, maybe, if you need that kind of thing. But uh, we just need it for the living wood and the living rock. It, uh, you see the little particles going. It takes about 60 seconds for the transformation. Oh, there it goes. And we can just pick it up. Oh, we want to make something with this stuff. I just realized I don't know if this is the pack that I found mana steel in. Oh, we have one. Hmm. I don't think that's enough. What I want is one of these world okay, yeah, so we'd need four mana steel for this. But that would not be too hard. So we're going to need some living rock as well. Make it exactly the same way we made the living wood. So while we're making some more living wood and similar... We're going to make ourselves a couple of what are called generating flowers. These generate mana, and mana, unsurprisingly, is the power conceit of the mod. Um, it's two brown, a red, and a light gray. Get to your endo flame. We're going to make we're going to make one more right now. We're probably going to make quite a hello. Weird. We're probably going to make more than one now. You see this? This is cool. Um, just throws whatever in there. Whoops. And then you throw seeds in, and you're good. So we're going to put these down right here. And we have a very simple redstone contraption here. A pressure plate and a repeater that's going to power this block. Uh, run a signal up here to this hopper and lock it so when there's something here darn it <laughs> that's uncool oh it's bouncing off the hopper so we're gonna go ahead and make the next thing <laughs> um this will help this is an open crate it's like a dropper except uh whatever it's dropping always goes straight down so I'm going to pop this thing right here. And if we were to put uh, three charcoal in, four charcoal, let's say, and take off our magnet, that's the one thing with doing this. Like, magnets are not your friend. So in a second or two, one of these endo flames should pick up the charcoal. Hello? Hello? Endo flames? Nope. Nope. Well, maybe they're not picking it up because they don't have any place to send it? I feel like that's never stopped them before. Anyway, the point of the redstone contraption is as long as there's something, uh, something on the pressure plate. Should we go up one? Nah. As long as there's something on the pressure plate. Nothing will drop through the hopper. Now we have completed some of the quests here. Let's see if we get uh, we get a little bit of stone. We get a little bit of coal. So one thing we're definitely going to want to make is a wand of the forest. And it's going to take three living wood twigs and some petals. Any petals will do. Here we go. This is kind of the wrench of the mod. Another thing we're going to need is a mana spreader, and I think it's done like this. Yeah. Got a mana spreader, and we're going to need a mana pool. And we got another quest. What do we get? A little bit of floral fertilizer. 
very little bit. Now one thing we can do with mana is make mana steel. You just throw your iron in there. If there's not enough mana, you'll see a little X and it doesn't work. And with a couple more twigs, we can finally make our world shaper sextant. Now, if memory serves, what you do with this thing is you right click where you want the center to be and then right click again. No. Okay, shift right click to remove. What if we right click? Okay, here we go. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, now we got a nice big ghost image that will be reasonably round. I don't know that it's big enough. Let's try another one. Just right click, right? And then we just kind of sneak our way backwards. Oh. Last time we had it at eight. Let's go to nine. Okay, okay. That's nice and big. Let's make it bigger. <laughs> I think what I want to do is have it like significantly come off that side. All right. This is actually quite big. I like this. All right. It's a nice big circle. We are going to extend out a little bit this way. Now we're gonna need some more materials to build with. So we're gonna get into Ars Nouveau for a little bit of material production. The first thing we're gonna need is a bunch of arcane stone. And I don't even think this is gonna be enough. Oh, it might be enough. We need eight of these pedestals, right? Hey, we are also gonna need an arcane core. That's an arcane pedestal. There's an arcane core. Just need a little bit of gold for that, huh? Here we go. Now we're gonna need an enchanting apparatus. Here we go. Oh, all right. This should do it for us, huh? Oh, nope. Gonna need another, another little bit of arcane stone. Here we go. And we're just gonna... Come on, buddy. Come on down here. Good boy. I'm gonna move this thing. We're just gonna pop this thing right up here. And then when we have a better place to put it, we're going to move it. But this will do right now. You put the arcane core down like so. You put the enchanting apparatus right up on top of it. Now, this is... This, this whole thing is integrated with JI. You see your, your result, what you need to put in the pedestals, and what you need to put in the enchanting apparatus. In this case, we are first going to make some mage bloom seeds. And it's just like that. A little pretty animation. Ba -doo -ba -doo. And then you get your item. Now two of these we're just going to plant out here. Awesome. And we'll just uh, bone meal it. And get a little bit of mage bloom. Now, a couple episodes ago, we picked up a Sylph Shard. And if you watch Season 1, you've, you've definitely seen this thing. I mean, I, I think everybody's seen Ars Nouveau by now. But we'll just, uh, we'll just set it up real quick. And the seed, and the third Mage Bloom seed. And you pop the shard in there. And you get some fancy animation. And you get your Sylph Charm. This will allow us to summon a sylph, but we're going to need a couple more things. We're going to need probably more source stone than that. 
Now we're going to need two source jars. I made five. We're going to need a source relay, which is going to take a source gem block, which is a little pricey. Uh, here we go. We're going to need another pedestal. And finally, we're going to need something called a volcanic source link. Ah, I tell a lie. One more thing we need. We need uh, a dominion wand, which is just some gold, a little bit of source gems, and a stick. Source in ours new though is a lot like mana in Batania. Um, except there's even one more thing with it. There's there's source in forms of gems that uh, we mine up out of the world. There's also I'll make some of these fancy mystery wood tanks. Oh, we've already got a floor out here. There's also source in kind of a concentrated liquid form. We're gonna want, where's our volcanic, whatchamana, lose us? Here it is. There's a couple of ways you can concentrate source into a liquid. One of them, well, all of them are with source links, but one of those is with a volcanic source link. What you do, you can put a pedestal right next to this thing. It works a lot like the, uh, the endo flames, except that you can put something on an arcane pedestal, and it'll do thing for you. Like if we had the jar, you know, we could have the jar quite a bit farther away. But if we had it right, I think we'll move it a little bit. You know what? We're gonna move this back, and then put the pedestal down like so, right? So we could take this. This uses this will take anything burnable, right? And should pick it up off the floor, and it'll turn it into a little bit of source. And when it has a good amount, it'll send it over to the source jar. You can see it in there, that purple stuff on the bottom. It'll also take items off an adjacent pedestal and do the same thing, and that's what we want. Um, so we're going to take an item pipe and a storage drawer. Now, blazing archwood is the best thing you can use for this. Uh, anything burnable will work, <clears throat> but any archwood is better in this than anything else, and blazing archwood is the best of all. Now what we're gonna wanna do is have source being sent down here. So we're gonna take that relay we made, we're gonna pop it down, and take our dominion wand, and just right click on the source jar, and then right-click on the relay to send to the relay. And then to send from the relay, you just right-click on the relay first. And then right-click on whatever source jar you want to send to. And as you can see, the Blazing Archwood does a pretty good job. This thing's already, like, more than halfway full. Now we got all of that. To summon the Sylph, we're going to need something called a Summoning Crystal. And again, not that hard to make. Arcane stone and some vanilla ingots. I got one too many. There we go. Source gem block in the middle. Now we're gonna need a chest. Now the sylph likes quantity and diversity. And we have both. We got a lot going on out here. We got a lot of it. Once you're all set up, you can just right click on your summoning crystal and you'll get your sylph and she will start using the source to produce all of this all right now we got her making wood and other stuff for us you should be in good shape this thing we want to do work on a floor for upstairs now these floors from cooking for blockheads it's part of the Cooking for Blockheads multi-block kitchen. And I don't actually think 24 is going to be enough. But you can dye these things, and anything that connects to them, I'm assuming the uh, cooking table is on top of them, will become part of the kitchen. But we'll get into more about that later. Right now it's just about making a floor. 
I have this divided up into a couple of little rooms. We're going to want a kitchen over here. So, unsurprisingly, perhaps this is where we're going to put the kitchen floor. Now, that diamond chest is really just supposed to be a buffer. We're going to make a couple of ender chests to move the stuff into our new basement, which I just finished digging out. Now, ender chests are cool from the ender storage. They're not, uh, they work a little bit like the uh, vanilla ender chests in that they store inventory, but you can automate them with pipes and hoppers and so on. And you can also color code them. So if we pop one down here and we dye the center strip blue, for example, every ender chest that's in a loaded chunk that has white, blue, white, like that, will share an inventory. And we're going to hook a pipe up here. Very nice. And I made another big storage drawer system down here. This is going to be a lot easier than carrying all this stuff over by hand. Now we do want to, uh, we do want to lock it all up. Um, and quantify it. We don't want these just uh, flying into every drawer. It'll be madness. But now you can see it's, uh, it's, it's slowly but surely filling up with the stuff from the, the other ender chest. And we're going to speed it up at some point, but right now I think it's just fine because we're going to have a lot of organizing and sorting to do. And once we've got a couple things in here, at least, it's worth uh, hooking this up as long as you put locked stuff down. It will not necessarily, if these aren't locked, the chest will not necessarily <laughs> default, or the controller will not necessarily default to where you have stuff assigned to you. Now, this is not going to be enough drawers for everything that we're going to have going into this system. So I cleared out some more space here. We're going to want to connect it on the corner here. Anything that's from the mod that's touching the controller or touching something that's touching the controller, the controller can control. So we are going to make ourselves a little bit of trim. A nice cheap block and it will connect if we put some drawers along here now facing this way. So here's our old hidey hole. It's now just part of the basement. What I think we need to do next. We've got plenty of this stone. I'm gonna steal a battery. I'm gonna steal a generator. And it'll still run, um, just much more slowly. And we're gonna go ahead and upgrade. Oh, it's in the, uh, it's in the bank. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade to, uh, to some better processing. I'm trying to get rid of the bank here, and I'm doing a bad job. Um, we're also going to grab the laboratory furnace. Uh, you can upgrade this with some hoppers and a metal bar, and now it's an electrical furnace, and it'll run on power. Here we go. Wonderful. And this should start charging up. I guess we'll see. A little bit of gold. Anything happening? Might need pipes, but let's make sure we're just not... Okay, there we go. Yeah, we just had this extracting to the, the wrong side. That's pretty fast. That's what we're looking for. And I think we're going to call things here, folks. we got a lot of prog... Ooh, a little more athletics. A lot of progress today, so thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.